What's up, basketball fans? Welcome to the Verdach Report. It's time to talk about the Toronto Raptors' latest signing. And yes, it was announced a few days ago. I'm a little bit late getting to this. But Sham Shania announced that free agent Jalen McDaniels has agreed to a two-year, $9.3 million deal with the Toronto Raptors. Now, this is going to be a great deal for the Toronto Raptors. So for today's video, I'm going to be going through why this is a very under-the-radar move for the Toronto Raptors. I'm also going to be talking about Jalen McDaniels himself, his statistics. I'm going to go through some of his stats as well and discuss why I think he's special for the Raptors and talk about his future with the Raptors as well. So if you're ready to watch this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And with that being said, let's get right into today's video. Now, as you guys know, I do like to give out shout outs on my channel and the shout out for today's video goes out to MSG8789 and Jerome Campbell as well. Thank you to both of you guys for supporting this channel to your likes and comments. It is very much appreciated. Now, let's talk about Jalen McDaniels and why I believe this is a great move for the Toronto Raptors. Now, reason number one, I believe this to be a really good signing for the Toronto Raptors is you have to take into consideration that the Raptors actually tried to acquire Jalen McDaniels at the NBA trade deadline. Prior to, William Liu was talking about this, and he said the Raptors are very interested in Jalen McDaniels. Some names that were being thrown out there were Gary Trent Jr., some other guys as well. And this is a bonus signing for the Raptors because not only did they get the player they wanted at the NBA trade deadline, you got him on a really cheap deal. Two-year, $9.3 million is amazing, especially after you see some of the money that is being thrown in the NBA to even good role players. Now, Jalen McDaniels is excellent for the Toronto Raptors because not only is this a good deal, not only is this someone the Raptors wanted, this is a small forward. He, Yes, he's listed at 6'9", but he's a small forward. He's a really good defender, and this finally gives the Raptors a backup for OG and Obi. We know OG and Obi is very injury-prone, so finally you get someone like a Jalen McDaniels. I'm not saying his defense is on par with the OG and Anobi, but this finally gives someone to, you know, someone up to the Raptors bench, which was desperately needed at the small forward position, because oftentimes what we've seen in past seasons is, look, you could argue that Nick Nurse didn't give his bench consistent minutes. But one thing you cannot argue is that Raptors bench wasn't great defensively. So I think this gives the Raptors a solidified three and D player on the bench. And he's six nine. He's even taller than OG and Anobi. He's at times able to guard even shooting guards as well. So this is a bonus signing for the Raptors, considering his age, 25 years old. He's listed at six nine. He's a small forward that plays great defense as well. So this gives the Raptors that six eight, six nine vision they were going with, yes, but also on a really reasonable contract. This is great for the Raptors. But let's talk about Jalen McDaniels himself because I want to give you a little bit of a background about him and what he's able to do and what I think he'll be able to do with the Toronto Raptors. Now, taking a look at Jalen McDaniels statistics here, you notice he had a little bit of a down second half of the season when he got traded to the Philadelphia 76ers. But I want to focus your attention on the Charlotte Hornets, the first 56 games. I feel like with the 24 games he played with the Philadelphia 76ers, he didn't really get a rhythm, and his minutes decreased. His role, of course, in decreased as well, and the 76ers are a much better team than the Hornets. But I want to focus on a few things here. Now, taking a look at his statistics, you notice that he averaged 10.6 points with the Hornets, which is great for the Raptors. That is something they need. They need production off the bench. They also need defense off the bench. He's a pretty decent rebounder. I'm not going to call him a great rebounder for his size. 4.8 rebounds, honestly, is not too shabby. And two assists is amazing because that is a part of his game. He has been steadily improving. And he, of course, gives you some steals as well, which is good. Now, I do want to talk about his three-point shooting as well because the initial reaction from a lot of fans was, we signed another 6'9 forward who can't shoot. He's a much better much, much better three-point shooter than his numbers may indicate. Again, 40% with the Philadelphia 76ers, only on 1.3 three-point attempts per game. 3.6 attempts with the Hornets, not so well. 32% I know isn't the greatest, but he's a pretty solid three-point shooter. And I'm not exaggerating when I say this. And even his field goal, field goal percentage, excuse me, as you see there, it's been improving slowly season by season. So he's a, he's, he's a pretty good player overall. And in terms of what he brings to the Raptors, I think, it's one of those cases where everyone's going to say, well, he can bring defense. He can, you know, produce some points. He can hit shots as well. He'll get you some steals. But I think the most important part with this is he's 25 years old. And I'm going to talk about this in relation to what I'm going to talk about next, because I want to talk about his usage rate as well. Because oftentimes what we do is we look at points, rebounds, assists, and we're like, okay, this guy played, you know, 26 minutes a game. He's not producing amazingly. So what's all the hype about? Well, let's talk about his usage rate here. Now, just to give you a little bit of an idea, as you see his usage rate on the screen there, 
He had a usage rate of 17.5 with the Hornets. It dropped, of course, with the 76ers, who were contenders last year. And they had a lot more guys that would obviously be, be more ball dominant as well. But to give you a little bit of a background, we're going to focus on that number, 17.5. Because comparing that to players on the Raptors, you look at where he would have ranked. He actually ranks exactly where Jakob Pertl is at 17.5 usage rate. I mean, heck, even Chris Boucher had a higher in the pre previous season than someone like a Jalen McDaniels, 18% usage rate for someone like a Chris Boucher. So I don't think it's exactly fair to compare his numbers and say, well, he wasn't producing all that well. Those are some of the things we do have to take into consideration when we talk about players. I think his usage rates should definitely increase on the Raptors, especially considering, you know, OG and Anobi may go down with injuries. He's injury prone at times. And also because I think he will get some runs with the starting unit as well. But there's another aspect of this I really want to discuss, and that is his defensive box plus minus. Now, as I talked about earlier in this video, I was talking about his defense. And as you take a look there with the Hornets, he had a defensive box plus minus of 0 0.7. Now you're probably thinking that isn't the greatest. So what exactly are we excited about when we talk about his defense? Well, let's give you another example here. The Hornets weren't exactly a great defensive team. They ranked 20th in the entire league, averaging 100 or allowing, I should say, 114.7 points per game. So for any player to have a positive defensive box plus minus i think that really gives you an idea that he's a good defensive player and for those who may disagree let's take a look at someone like the san antonio spurs as you see at the bottom of the screen the worst ranked defensive or they allowed the most points per game out of any nba team this season and i want to use Jakob pertl as an example now why Jakob pertl of all players because Jakob pertl we know is a good defensive player he had a defensive box plus minus of 1.5 with the toronto raptors and with the San Antonio Spurs, his defensive box plus minus was 0 0.4. So what does that tell you about stats like that? It, it, it really, again, you have to be a really good defender to be on a team that is a poor defensive team and have a positive, even though it may not be a major defensive box plus minus, to have a positive defensive box plus minus on a team that it plays no defense is a good sign. And that is obvious because we see with Jakob Pertl, how much is defensive box plus minus improved? So when you're on a good team like the Toronto Raptors, which has a lot of good defensive flair, you can bet that defensive box plus minus and his defensive win shares will definitely increase as well. Now, in terms of his future with the Raptors, I want to discuss that as well before we quickly end the video off here. Now, one thing I do wish to say before I end this video is I don't want to hype you guys up too much on Jalen McDaniels. He is what he is. He's not going to be someone that's going to give you 13, 14, 15 points off the bench. That is not his game. In fact, he's probably not going to be producing a ton offensively at the very least on the Raptors because his you have to take a few things into consideration. Jalen McDaniels is a good player, yes, but also the pecking order on the Raptors when you look at their five starters will likely be ahead of him. And then you can make the argument someone like a precious that she was. So realistically, he might be somewhere in the seventh or eighth position in terms of pecking order so that doesn't necessarily give him a great shot at producing a lot of points i think it depends on also how darko uses him as well and how much he continues to develop him in the obviously following seasons as well so i don't necessarily think this is something that obviously his defense yes you'll see but in terms of his offensive game i don't necessarily think this will be someone that will come in and have a massive impact on the offensive side this is someone you can work within your system who's still really young he's 25 years old so you can still work with him and you know develop his game a little bit more now again i don't want to i don't want to point this i don't want to paint this picture of Jalen mcdaniels where i think he's going to be the next og Ninobi or the next best thing on the toronto raptors i think he will realistically in his nba career be a bench player but he could become a really good bench player and also in terms of how we talked about og Ninobi getting injured and also just you know having defense on our bench I think the major thing here is, again, I'm not comparing OG or Jalen to defenses at all, but I think there's not a huge drop-off. When you look at previous seasons, like who did we have as our 3 and D guy off the bench? We really didn't. We were playing G-leaguers. We were signing all sorts of random players who were at the end of the bench guys, and we were forced to play those guys at the three position. So this gives you someone who is an established NBA player, and this is something I talked about in my previous video where it gives you really good role players and complementary players. That is something the Raptors have needed. So now their bench looks all of a sudden a lot better as well. So I think the Raptors bench should be much better than we had anticipated, but also because they finally got some seasoned veterans. I don't want to call Jalen McDaniels a veteran, 
because he hasn't been in the NBA for too, too long, but it is someone that has been in the NBA for several seasons and he is able to produce as well. So I think this is a great signing for the Toronto Raptors. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. So what are your thoughts on this signing? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, I do have a trivia question for you today. And that trivia question is, which college did Jalen McDaniels go to? Is it A, Kansas? Is it B, San Diego State? Is it C, UCLA? Or is it D, Baylor? So whoever answers this trivia question correctly first in the comment section gets a shout out in my next video. So that will be it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope you guys have yourselves a great day.